In this video, I'm going to talk about Infinity, or to be more accurate, some of the facilities built into VB.NET for working with Infinity. You probably already have some idea of what Infinity is. The concept of Infinity describes something endless, something without limits. Start counting, and you need never stop. The standard symbol for Infinity is the so-called Lemnis Gate, which looks like a figure eight lying down. The ancient Greeks were very uncomfortable with the concept of Infinity, because it didn't sit well with their view of a world governed by mathematical ratios and harmony. And then there was the so-called Infinity Paradox. A straight line, for example, is a one-dimensional shape that goes on forever, in both directions. It consists of an infinite number of points, side by side. A point has no size, so it follows that a line segment, a finite part of a line, contains an infinite number of points between the beginning and the end. How then can you ever get from A to B if there are an infinite number of places in between? And what about infinity plus one? Exactly how big is that? Infinity is an imaginary abstract concept, for sure, but it's nevertheless very useful. Infinity underpins a number of fundamental concepts in mathematics, such as set theory and calculus. Infinity allows us to make theoretical projections and predictions about the unknown, based on what we do know. Infinity is therefore extremely important in the fields of science and engineering. Let's take a look at how VB.NET handles infinity. I'm going to start by declaring a few variables. I've declared a as an integer and I've assigned the value 5 to it. And I've declared b as a double and I've assigned the value 0.000001. I'm now going to calculate the value of result by dividing a by b. And let's output the result. The result is 500,000. Now I'm going to make b smaller. And the result is even bigger. Let's make b even smaller. As b gets smaller, the result gets bigger. And eventually, the result is too big to fit into an integer variable. So I'm getting what's called a system overflow exception. The biggest value I can put into an integer variable is around about 2 billion. I'll talk about handling these runtime errors, or exceptions as they're correctly known, in another video. But suffice to say for now, as the value of b gets closer to zero, the value of result approaches infinity. Let's try something else. This time I'm going to attempt to divide 5 by 0. Well, as you would expect, another overflow error. But watch what happens when I change the data type of result to a string. This time a lemnus gate is being output. The result is infinity. Now this is peculiar to .NET. Other languages, such as Python, would give you a division by zero error. But this is not causing VB.NET to crash. So it begs the question then, what is infinity plus one? Infinity plus one is still infinity. A mathematician could have told you that. What about infinity multiplied by infinity? Infinity times infinity is, guess what? Infinity. What if a was zero and b was zero, and we attempt to divide one by the other? What would we get then? Let's try it. Zero divided by zero is not a number. N -A -N. In VB.NET, 
we have positive infinity and negative infinity. Let's declare a couple more variables. So in my first calculation, I'm dividing 5 by 0, as I did before. In my second calculation, I'm dividing minus 5 by 0. 5 divided by 0 is infinity. Minus 5 divided by 0, on the other hand, is minus infinity. Watch this. If the result of this calculation is bigger than the result of this calculation, we will say so. Positive infinity is bigger than negative infinity. Indeed it is. By the way, I didn't ask if result 1 is bigger than result 2, because result 1 and result 2 are string variables vb.net would simply do string comparisons and the outcome would be different. If I need to, I can test to see if a calculation has generated a result of infinity. If double dot is infinity and there's the variable containing the lemnus gate, equals true, then I will report that the result is infinity. Not only can I test if a result is infinity, I can test if a result is positive infinity, negative infinity, not a number, and something called epsilon. Epsilon is the smallest possible value which you can have, which is greater than zero. Now, as I said before, in other programming languages, if you attempt to divide a number by zero, you will get a runtime error, a division by zero exception. However, VB.NET and indeed other .NET languages, such as C Sharp, can still throw a division by zero exception. Let me show you how to do integer division. I'm dividing 5 by 2 this time, but notice that I'm not using a forward slash as the division operator, I'm using a backslash instead. Watch what happens. 5 divided by 2 is 2. We're simply ignoring the remainder, we're doing whole number division. What's interesting this time is if I attempt to do integer division by zero, I will get an exception, but not an overflow. This time I'm getting the divide by zero exception. Integer division can be very useful. Some processor architectures handle calculations that involve only integers differently from calculations that include floating point numbers. They use different processor registers, and they have different low-level instructions in their instruction set specifically for that. Therefore, there can be performance gains by using the integer division operator, as long as you don't attempt to divide by zero. So there you have it. Normal floating point division in VB.NET doesn't result in a division by zero exception. It results in infinity. Perhaps you'd like to try writing some of this code yourself. Maybe you can find out what is infinity minus infinity. Or infinity divided by infinity.